Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can get started. It's uh, really a pleasure for me to talk with you a little bit about one of the hot topics of uh, this year's ES EIS, which is obviously the EDOF um, technology. So these are um, our financial disclosures. We work together with quite a lot of uh, companies at our research center in Heidelberg. So in the past, we have had uh, basically two different options how to treat breast biopia. We could target for monovision using monofocal intraocular lenses, and this approach allowed uh, to achieve a full range of vision, but we at the same time had a loss of uh, depth perception, and we also noticed that intermediate visual acuity is not optimal. We can also use multifocal intraocular lenses. These lenses allow for multiple focal planes to be created for a fuller range of vision. At the same time, we have an increased chance for visual disturbances, however, and there's a reduction in the contrast sensitivity. This gap is now filled um, by the EDOF intraocular lenses. These lenses provide an improved intermediate vision. At the same time, they reduce visual disturbances and they also allow for better contrast sensitivity. These days we have quite a lot of different optical technologies available that can create this extended depth of focus. We can use the diffractive technology, the refractive technology, the X-wave technology and the small aperture principle which is used for example in the IC8. In the laboratory we have uh, used a ray propagation imaging technique to look at the rays that are created by these EDOF intraocular lenses. And you can see, despite the fact that different optical principles are used, we always see this elongated focus that then leads to spectacle independence in our uh, patients. Some time ago, there was an FDA AAO workshop which assessed innovative IOL designs. And um, during this workshop, the FDA announced the new EDOF uh, IOL category um, extended depth of focus. And these lenses include IOL designs that are intended to enhance intermediate range of vision while maintaining high quality distance vision. However, EDOF IOLs do not enhance near vision to the same extent as multifocal intraocular lenses. And that is something that we also have to explain to our patients. During that meeting, the AAO task force also made this consensus statement um, that, is, um, uh, that is used uh, to classify EDOF intraocular lenses. And you can see um, that there are several endpoints that we have to look at when we are looking at the clinical studies. So the monocular depth of focus at 0.2 logma, for example, needs to be 0.5 diopters or greater than in the monofocal control group. The mean monocular photopic DCV, DCIVA at six months needs to be superior in comparison to the monofocal control group. The monocular photopic DCIVA um, of 0.2 logma or better must be achieved in at least 50% of the eyes. And regarding the mean monocular photopic um, best corrected distance visual acuity, there should be a non-inferiority in comparison with the monofocal control group. One thing that is important to keep in mind, many times we use these EDOF lenses to reduce the amount of visual disturbances, but in, these, in this consensus statement there is not really any criteria on visual disturbances, but uh, during the rest of my talk I will obviously discuss this important um, topic also with you. So let's start with one of the uh, first um, EDOF intraocular lenses on the market, uh, which is the Technus Symphony. This lens is based on a diffractive um, achromatic technology that extends the focus and compensates for chromatic aberration um, of the cornea. We all know that in terms of visual acuity results, good uh, uh, results are achieved in the far and intermediate uh, distance. However, we also know that there's a reduced mesopic contrast sensitivity in comparison to monofocal intraocular lenses. And there's also an increased rate of visual disturbances in comparison with monofocal um, intraocular lenses. Another um, um, lens that is using diffractive um, technology is the AT Lara. And once again, the benefit is so certainly that uh, very good visual acuity results are achieved in the far and intermediate distance. But as this technology is once again based on the principle of diffraction, um, there is an increased risk um, for visual disturbances. So let's switch gears now a little bit and talk about the refractive technology that can also be used to produce EDOF lenses. One of the refractive lenses is, for example, the Miniwell Ready Progressive IOL. 
This IOL is comprised of three different optical zones where several spherical aberrations are implied and this provides a progressive multifocality. In terms of the visual disturbance profile, we have uh, published some uh, good results. Um, the drawback of this um, uh, IOL is, however, that the performance may vary by pupil size and corneal asphericity. So the results are not as predictable as uh, we would like the results to be um, predicted. So let's talk now about another refractive technology. In fact, that is one of the first EDOF lenses once again that was on the market and that is the Lentis Comfort. This IOL is a refractive shape segmented bifocal IOL with a low near addition of just 1.5 diopters. The EDOF mechanism is based in this IOL on a refractive bifocality and rotational asymmetry. We have evaluated that intraocular lens also on the optical bench and we could very nicely demonstrate that very good image quality is achieved in the far and intermediate distance and at the same time still good image quality is also achievable in the near distance. In a clinical study this IOL was implanted into patients and you can see from um, the uh, graphic on the left hand side that excellent visual acuity results were achieved in the far distance and in the intermediate distance and at the same time functional visual acuity results were also achieved in the near distance. Teleon now also has another lens on the market which is called the Aconex uh, Vario and that lens is actually taking the same approach as the previous lens so we are talking about a segmental refractive multifocal intraocular lens. This lens is a one-piece posterior chamber lens for an extended depth of focus and a high contrast sensitivity with an aspherical surface and a blue light filter. You can see from the graphic on the right hand side that a large range of vision is achieved with this approach and you can also see that this is achieved with the lowest photopic, uh, photic uh, side effects that um, we uh, currently can achieve with such um, intraocular lenses. Another great advantage of this intraocular lens is certainly the material. It's made of a hydrophobic glistening free um, material. Um, we have in one of the previous papers been able to show in the American Journal of Ophthalmology um, that glistenings um, really go along with an increase in terms of um, stray light and um, that's the reason why certainly I do not want to see glistenings in my monofocal lens patients and I even less want to see glistenings in patients who pay a lot of extra money to get rid of spectacles. So a hydrophobic glistening free material is really the material that we should aim for. So the last technology that I would like to talk about is the X-Wave technology. The X-Wave technology is um, based on a 2.2 millimeter wavefront shaping technology. And this technology stretches and shifts the wavefront. It avoids light split splitting and it results in an extended focal range rather than in multiple focal um, points. We also have that um, lens several times implanted in our center. This was actually one of the first ones that I did. And uh, this is a candidate where I did a unilateral implantation in a very young patient. That patient suffered from a unilateral traumatic um, cataract. And I think that EDOF lenses are especially in such a population a very good idea. You can see from the results that um, this lens performed very well in the far and intermediate distance and once again in the near distance functional visual acuity results were achieved. This is another very young patient where this um, IOL was implanted just in one eye. This uh, patient suffers from a kirschmann steinert myotonic dystrophy which is a disease which oftentimes goes along with early development of cataract. You can see once again from the defocus curve that uh, it, this IOL can provide an extended range of vision and regarding the photic phenomena, low amounts of these visual disturbances can be detected. Yeah, in the end of my talk, I also would like to very quickly address the monofocal plus segment. In my talk, I have so far been talking about the EDOF intraocular lenses, which indeed provide excellent visual acuity results in the far and intermediate distance. So whenever a patient is really asking for spectacle independence, the EDOF lenses are certainly a suitable option. Monofocal plus lenses 
perform better in the intermediate distance than classical monofocal intraocular lenses. You can expect about one line more with a, uh, with a uh, monofocal plus lens uh, in comparison to a monofocal lens, but you cannot in, uh, expect the same amount of intermediate visual acuity as you can expect with a traditional EDOF intraocular lens. Teleon also has now a new monofocal plus um, lens um, on the market, which is called um, the Quantum uh, design. And um, this lens is actually launched at this year's ESEIS. And uh, yeah, please have a look at uh, the results that are presented about that. Yeah, so I really think that currently we are at the beginning of a new era. In the past, we have been implanting all these different type of technologies, but it was sometimes very difficult for us as surgeons to decide which is the best uh, lens to go to. With the new technology that we now have available, we can offer our patients spectacle independence without visual disturbances. And I'm quite sure that this will lead to the fact that first of all, monofocal lenses will probably quite rapidly disappear um, from the use because um, these eat of intraocular lenses perform better in terms of visual acuity, but they don't, uh, make, uh, they don't create more side effects. And that's basically the reason that we will uh, certainly see more of this technology being used in the future. Thank you very much.